<laughs> All right, you guys, so it is Thanksgiving Eve. Actually, it's about, we're coming on midnight right now. Close. I've been working really, really hard today, putting up tree stands, working on food plots, cleaning up camp, getting ready, because tomorrow is the first annual 2016 Thanksgiving out here at the ranch. It's my good buddy, Paul, you know him. You've seen him all over the place. We're gonna be frying a turkey tomorrow. I love fried turkey. And Paul, he's grown up eating lamb on the spit. So we're gonna show you how to turn this into this. This is how we do it. What I've done is taken garlic, fresh whole cloves of garlic, and basically cut them in half. It's important to cut them in half because you release all the flavor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, not too sharp a knife, but a nice little knife like this, and we're gonna look for spots. The most obvious spot under an armpit. You're looking for little gaps between the muscle where you can make a little incision and you just, that's it, hide that little piece of garlic. This garlic is gonna be constantly leaking out of garlic juice and as it's rolling, garlic juice and the fat, the natural fat, there's a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, that's all gonna be basting itself. Very little drips, but it just bastes itself over and over and over again, pretty neat. Man, this thing smells so good. Come all the way back. Here's your ham, and we can just... Making little pockets for our garlic cloves. And they just hide right in there, just like that. And it's important to keep the garlic cloves whole, well, half, not crushed. Don't crush them with a knife. It's a lot, e a lot easier to get it in there. Right. I was asking Paul, because this is the first time I've ever done this, I was asking him, why don't you crush it? And now, clearly, it's so much easier to do it without crushing it, because you actually need it to have a little rigidity, and it just slides up in there. And if it won't go, get you a smaller piece. Look at that. Now fresh rosemary. What do we do with that? Straight out of the garden. Wash it. Once it's washed, we're going to try and find areas. I, I like to typically just cut it in half. That's, you know, that's a manageable size, basically. Nice piece. Just bury it in there. That one actually completely, almost completely hides itself. So we're just looking for spots anywhere where you think and there's no set rule here. All right, so we have our Thanksgiving lamb doctored up like a Christmas tree. Now, next step. Next step, the magic potion. What we did earlier is we took the garlic and added lemon juice. You can see a little bit of black pepper and some olive oil. And essentially, you've got a paste. What we do is with this paste, it's just as simple as that. You're just gonna give it a, a rub all the way around. Make sure we've taken the black plastic away but this table is absolutely clean. Everywhere, underneath everything, around everything, and this is your marinade, basically. This is gonna set us up for the night before it goes into the cooler. And when we take it out in the morning, all we have to do is hook it up to the wiring system or the, uh, the spit itself. And I'll show you how to wire that up so that it's balanced. It's important to be balanced. Flip it over into the middle and go down into the middle as well. This is all, everything needs garlic. Now, kosher salt. Beautiful. That salt will actually toughen up the skin, dry it out a little bit overnight. And now, the secret weapon, um, pass me some of that Everglades. I don't even think I need to rub this in, Rob. You did a pretty good job. You gotta be honest with you guys here. I put Everglades on like everything in this world. And this is a, a family tradition for Paul and his family. And it's really cool for him to be bringing it out here, cooking it like this for us. And I was like, we gotta put Everglades on it. And he was very, very reluctant. So I'm gonna leave it up to him. If he wants to put Everglades on it, he can. If not, we're gonna taste the way he does. We'll see what he does. Open it for a minute. Let's try half. Half is good. Mm -hmm. 
and I've got some ice packs that are. You guys, this Paul does own Ingle coolers, and as he says, come on, Rob, please cooler to box. You. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> yeah, he says cooler box. What ice size box. cooler? What size is that? That's a 320, as big as we make it. That's pretty cool. So if you're deer hunting or hog hunting or traveling out west, you can see that. there's, a, there's lot of a ton of room, ton of room. You did good. Huh? Hey, you guys, shout out to the uh, bus in the background there. The next time you see us, it'll be what, 4.30 a.m. and- Yeah, it's like 20 minutes from now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be putting this together and uh, having a feast a little later on tomorrow. All right, good morning, everybody. We just had our two hour nap. Now it's 4.30 a.m. and we're uh, we're gonna withdraw the lamb out of its resting place. Oh, look how crusty it got. Mm. All right, so at this point, what we gotta do is put it on the spit. And according to Paul, you got to make it level on the spit. Otherwise, when it rolls, it's like <laughs> so you got to make it level. And if I don't make any sense, it's because I basically am not even awake yet. wonderful machines. In the old days we used to have to sit here. Our parents would bribe us and we'd to build a little barrier to get away from the heat and you'd sit here with a handle and we'd be paid by the half hour and uh, just rotate as many kids as you as you could stand and just going around and around and around. And you're talking minimum eight hours, ideally nine hours, but the invention of these little slow AC motors just plug it into power and these things just turn flawlessly. Um, awesome machine, absolutely awesome. That's it. Well, this is your noontime update. It's been cooking now for about six or seven hours, smelling absolutely delicious. There's, there's baby Ari and Sarah. They're vlogging for dear mom. But everyone's starting to show up. It's gonna be a great day. Got so much to be thankful for. So much. All right, y'all. All the hard work is starting to pay off. It's getting nice and charred. You can see the separation. You can see all the garlic just rolling out. Look at that. Rosemary, see the separation in the meat. Ooh. Things are going so good out here. Check this out. That's my fried turkey. He's like 17 and a half pounds, three and a half minutes per pound. Oils at 325 degrees, so basically it's an hour cook time. And I stuffed him with bacon. That can't be a bad thing. There he is, y'all. The Brito Mas Grande. Women are talking about white teeth. Everyone's out here. That's what it's all about, y'all. We're out here having us a great time. Look at our look at our lamb. Ready? Ready when you are. Let's do it. All righty, grab grab that. Hold on. This is hot. Whoa! Grab it in the middle. Yeah, grab it in the middle. There we go. Almost dropped it in the pot. In the. Slide it up there. Hey, you just put it like that for now. Just to show you guys, this is what you want to see. This meat 
the skin just just I mean you can literally just just tear it apart like that Ooh, just layers and this is pretty salty yeah the outside layers it's pretty Tell me salty. About it. it's dried out it's salty but honestly this is this is what it's all about for me personally cooking it. Mm. You know, you got these fancy knives, but mm. all right, y'all. It's been exactly one hour. Look at that! I stuffed it with bacon. Now, that's like a bomb. You got to pay attention, make sure the kids don't run into this because although the fire's off, that could still cause catastrophic damage. And the other thing on that grease, so the other thing on the grease, never pour this grease down your drain. It goes down your drain, it hardens in the sewer system, and it causes huge problems. Never ever pour grease down your drain. Pour it in the trash or recycle it. That's coming from Brito Mas Grande, Life Ain't Crap -ay. He makes money turning turds into cash, folks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone's got to take care of sanitation. Yeah, yeah. So what what do you do? Uh, not much. He's a man of few words, y'all. Me picking on the carcass is the best part. Jen cooked the whole chicken the other night. I cut all the pieces off and dished it out to the kids, and I just put the carcass on my plate. Stretched That's away, deboned it. <laughs> That's my favorite. When I was so as a student at University of Florida, I had a uh, functional vertebrate anatomy class that we had to know every single bone in a chicken. So before our exam, my treat was I went to KFC, got a half a chicken, and as every single bone as I laid it on the table, I could name it. There you go. That's our lamb. That's our turkey. Lord, thank you so much for this day and thank you for this food. Thank you for all of our wonderful friends and family and, and thank you for our strength and our health. Lord, I thank you for all of our many blessings and our many opportunities in life. Lord, uh, please nourish this food to our body and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What you think, Granny? Delicious. You like it? Oh yeah, delicious. Alberto, what you think? Good. Very good. Luki, get cornbread. Lauren, come sit here so you can watch them till I get my plate. Okay. Well, everybody, I sure hope you enjoyed watching that. The lamb was absolutely amazing. No mint jelly needed. And hey, the turkey, it was as good as always. And you know, Thanksgiving is a great time for friends and family and fellowship. And having it out there on the ranch for the first time, that was so awesome. I just want to encourage everybody to remember Thanksgiving. A grateful heart is a happy heart. Be thankful for what you have. Sometimes you're on the top of the hill, sometimes you're in the bottom of the valley. But if it weren't for the valleys, the mountains would always be flat. Um, please don't smush Halloween together with Christmas. Remember that the Thanksgiving is right there in the middle. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for who you are. And I want to let everyone know that Sarah and I and Baby Ari, we are so thankful for you being a part of our channel and a part of our lives. We love you. And uh, thank you for making 2016 so wonderful for us. I gotta get back in the room, finish editing, but I love you, and I'll see you soon. We go.